Hey guys, welcome to my beginner Python tutorials. Uh, I'm going to try to keep the videos between 5 and 15 minutes because I want to get straight to the point, um, explain what it is exactly that um, you can expect from the topic that I'm going over, and then just go kind of uh, experiment on your own. I don't want to get too crazy with um, like underlying mechanics of how it may or may not work, just because that could be um, a little too uh, in-depth for um, just kind of getting into programming initially. And I think if you can just kind of know what things do versus why things are, uh, that'll, it'll be much more functional um, as you start. When you are a little bit more experienced with it, then you can start going into the whys and then it'll really like um, push your understanding of the language uh, further. This video is about assignments, operators, and comparisons. There's not really much to go uh, with all of this stuff, so I'm gonna go over it pretty quick. But I just have some examples that I want to uh, show you, explain a couple things, and, and that will be that. So the first thing we have is assignments. Python isn't strict uh, type, so it will assume your assignment uh, type based off of how the uh, variable is set. So the first one, uh, is an integer because I'm simply just putting a number. The second one's a float because it has a decimal point. Uh, integers and floats in Python are pretty similar. You could um, add them together, but it could cause some weird issues. I'll explain that um, more in a little bit. And uh, when you put uh, single quotes around it, it's a string. So you gotta make sure that when you're trying to do comparisons and things like that, uh, from variable assignments that you're doing it correctly because it could cause problems. All three of these are not necessarily interchangeable. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. When I print the uh, A plus A, the outcome is going to be an integer. When I print A plus B, the outcome will be a float. What that's going to do is essentially now you're working with a float. So when you start moving that around, if I said like C equals A plus B, now I have a float to work with. And the float could cause problems down the line. So you're either gonna have to convert it back to an integer uh, or just make sure you're dealing with the float. Um, the third case here, I'm just showing what happens when you try to add a uh, integer and a string. It's gonna give you an error. You're not really allowed to do that. Um, but what you can do is add two strings together. Now when you add two strings, it's not gonna do two plus two equals four. It will just kind of combine them together. So if I have two words and I put a plus in between them, the two words are gonna get smashed together. So let me show you that. Make sure that's there, okay. <clears throat> oh, terminal's being weird. All right, so here we go. This is the output of what I just explained. And you can see here that um, the third one uh, has an issue, and I just caught it and did something with it. So there's this didn't break the, the code, and the last thing was able to run. The next thing we have is operators. So I kind of already showed you a little bit of that, but it's like you know the plus, minus, equal signs and all that. Um, that stuff should be pretty straightforward, but basically think about it as uh, normal math. If you want to add two values together, you can. You just put a plus and then it'll be one plus one equals whatever. You can assign it a value uh, to a variable if you want. And I don't have an example of that, but I guess I could real quick just add that in. So like uh, a equal, oops, let me do this after. So I'll do it with B. So B equals one, C equals two, D equals D plus C, and then print D. <clears throat> so what this is gonna do is take the values of B and C, add them together, and then make it um, assign D to that outcome. So you could do a lot of pretty crazy things on the right side of the equal sign to make the value d be pretty much whatever you want. You don't have to just keep doing things on different lines. You could put a whole bunch of stuff in here. I could take the uh, uh, b plus c, 
then I could convert it to a string, manipulate the string, split it, and um, take an index of the split all in the same line, and D will be assigned to that. So there, when, when you're looking with the equals, there's so much you could do. It's not just about math. It's, it's about strings and all kinds of other things. So just keep that in mind. Um, the second thing I'm showing is really powerful. It's basically um, assigning, it's doing an operation and assigning the value at the same time. So what I'm saying is, is uh, add one to A and then make itself, make A equal to that result. Now what's interesting about here is if I just do this up front, there's gonna be a problem and that's why I put it in an exception um, or a try accept block because it wants A to be assigned first. You can't do this without A already having a value. It doesn't know what A was before. So how do I add one to something that doesn't exist yet? So what uh, you would wanna do is down what I did down here and I'm basically just uh, setting a equal to one and then I'm adding one to a and setting a as that value so you'll see all three of these let me print these out for you so there we go we got the three um, as expected we got the error that popped up in my uh, text editor already told me that this was gonna have a problem it says it's an undefined variable um, and then the third one printed the two just like normal. You could keep doing this. So essentially, uh, as an example, what you could use this for is, I think other languages already kind of have this uh, wrapped in, um, or there's like a weird syntax you could do to make this happen. But I could set a equal to zero, tr um, make do a uh, while loop, and then in that while loop do, um, I'm making a go up every time. So that's going to that's going to make uh, a just keep incrementing over and over again forever. Um, let me print that. Oh, I'm not printing it. Whoops. And there you go. It just goes forever. So if you're trying to count how many times you've iterated or other things like that, um, that could be a useful thing. I still use it in other cases too because it's just, you know, kind of a shorthand of Getting, getting a value to be assigned what you want it to be. And you're also reusing the variable, so you don't have to come up with all these other variable names. You're just reusing it. Um, in many cases, you could just discard the old variable and just reuse that variable to the new value. Um, don't, don't get worried about, you know, all, maybe you need that again. You probably won't. If you're changing it, you're, you're probably gonna just use that new version of it. The last little piece is comparisons. Uh, this one's uh, pretty straightforward too, and it's mainly, this is all pretty much for if statements, right? So I'm seeing if something is bigger than something else, uh, if something's the same as something else, things like that. So when you're looking at um, this first thing, I'm, I'm being explicit. I'm saying if A equals B, print they're the same. If A doesn't equal B, print they are not the same. You could put an else here, and it would be just fine. Um, I'm doing this just to show you the like how you would do it's not the same, but you can also do this for strings. And actually, um, I'll run this and then I'll change it to a string and strings can be compared as well if they're the same or not. And that's pretty useful in many cases, especially if you're dealing with like parsing and other stuff like that. The second part is comparing if something is greater than the other. Here, the order doesn't matter. It's kind of your preference. I could say if A is greater than B or if B is less than A, and this would be uh, the same result. What you can do here is however you like to say it, I would just go with that. I think for me, it kind of depends on what I'm comparing and how big maybe the variable name may be or something like that. Um, because sometimes you're not just going to do A plus B or, or, or sorry, A is greater than B. You're going to do like, you might have a big variable name or you're looking at a dictionary item and you're doing the key and you don't want to assign it a variable first. So all kinds of weird things like that to um, kind of make it a little bit more efficient without literally assigning variables for every single thing. Um, and 
this next piece is showing that uh, when you do a greater than or a less than, it's not inclusive, right? So if two equals two, it will not um, it will not ha um, um, meet that condition. So in this case, the else is going to get hit, and it's going to I like you could have just assume they're the same. If it's if a is not greater and b is not greater, then you know they're the same thing, um, and yeah, that will happen. So if we want to make it inclusive, we could just do a um, an operator with um, the greater than or equals to, and that will make sure it checks. Like if it's going right up to the number or it's more, then you know um, you're still good to go. And on this one, I wanted I, I have it commented out because it, it actually like really breaks the code, but the order matters on here. You want to put the primary operator, the greater than, before the equals. If you try to do it the other way, it's going to freak out. So just make sure that you do this in the correct order. So let me print these out so you can see that. So we see that we got, uh, they are not the same, uh, does not equal. And we got B is greater. And this didn't have any issues being in a different order. And here the else caught it because they are the same. And so one isn't bigger than the other. And finally, we got the last one where it's greater than or equal. And I, that's why I put it's greater than or equal. We don't really know, right? You could then after print what it was to see you know, if they were the same or not. But when you're dealing with code, if you just want it to be equal or greater than, you don't really care which one it is. You just know it was, it met the condition that you needed and move on and do something with it. Um, let me do the string real quick, just so you could see that. Setting them to a string and it's the same string value. So what you'll see here is I can compare that and it says they're the same. So I actually use this um, a lot in my code because I'm um, a lot of what I do is like network security stuff and I'm looking at contents of um, the information being sent over the network and it might I might need to see, hey, is this something bad? So I, I, I know that there's a bad uh, string and I wanna compare it to the string that is going across the network and if they, if they line up, then I know that that is also bad and I could do something with that. So comparing strings is something that um, is very useful and you'll probably be doing a lot. So don't think um, that it, you don't use it on strings or anything like that. Obviously, this is going to have issues, but what you could do is do length, right? So I, can, I could put um, length right here and that's going to give me, it's going to come out with a number. There we go. So since I'm converting that now to an integer, I can use um, that these operations. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, it'll let me know whether I should be making more of this stuff or not. Um, also in the description, I'll have uh, some links to things like uh, my Twitch channel where I program live, um, as well as do network security stuff, pen testing, things like that. Uh, my notify.me and um, any information related to like the operating system I use, um, text editor and all that good stuff. Um, take it easy.